Tonight, Amazon's Fire Phone fails to ignite the market. Etsy gets into the payment dongle game. And how Windows 10 is leveling up on security. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 200 for October 23rd, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TECHNIGHT. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. It was a big day for earnings reports. Some good, some ugly. Let's start with the good. Microsoft reported its overall surface revenue soared to about $908 million in the first quarter of 2015. That's the most recent quarter for them. Thanks to healthy Surface Pro 3 sales, that's up 127% since the same quarter last year. The company also revealed total Xbox console sales grew 102% to 2.4 million units in the quarter. Now, Sony's PlayStation 4 is still winning that sales battle against the Xbox. In fact, last month's sales were the ninth consecutive month that Microsoft lost to Sony. That's according to data from NPD. Still, for a software company like Microsoft, these are pretty good hardware numbers. And now to the darker side of hardware. Amazon said in a conference call following its third quarter earnings report that it would take a $170 million charge primarily related to Fire Phone inventory valuation, valuation and supplier commitment costs. In other words... The Fire Phone, which entered the market at $199 and then got cut to just $0.99 cents with an AT&T subscription, has not been a hit. Quite the opposite, actually. Amazon also announced a $437 million net loss in the third quarter on $20.58 billion of revenue, while analysts were expecting, well, better numbers. The company's forecast for the current holiday quarter, $27.3 to $30.3 billion, also fell short of analysts' hopes. You can imagine Amazon stock fell. In fact, it fell more than 10% in after-hours trading. That's a huge dip. And the stock is down over 20% overall for the year. Facebook's got a new standalone app. Boy, they love those standalone apps these days. This is just for iOS for now. And it's a forums app called Rooms, which allows you to withhold your real name and identity and set up a discussion space about a topic and customize the look and moderation settings and set a screen name for the room and choose who to invite to share text and photos and videos and comments with others in the room. Wow, sounds very throwbacky, doesn't it? Rooms, the app, doesn't require a Facebook account or even an email address to sign up. It actually uses a QR code invite system where people will take a photo or a screenshot of a room's code to gain entry. Kind of weird. Rooms was built by the branch team. That team was acquired by Facebook back in January. And to keep Room's conversation civil, which you can imagine could devolve into something very, very uncivil. Moderators can ban anybody. The, the, the banned person's device would be permanently banned from rejoining at that point. Facebook can also delete posts or ban members or even take down entire rooms in just a few uh, and just a, it's just a few swipes if they get complaints anyway. Now, Rooms is available in just a few English-speaking countries, including the U.S. and the U.K., and the team says an Android version is tentatively planned for early 2015. Whatever that means. Online marketplace Etsy will start offering free credit card readers to some of its U.S. sellers to help extend its reach beyond the Internet. Etsy dongles, which can be plugged into a smartphone or a tablet, will be used along with an Etsy app to allow sellers to accept credit and debit card purchases offline at places like craft fairs and other retail locations. Etsy says that more than 30% of their U.S.-based sellers on the Etsy network in the U.S. also sell their products at places like craft fairs, so this makes sense. Sellers using the credit card reader will pay Etsy 2.75% of each transaction. The readers are only available to sellers who use Etsy's own payments platform that's called Direct Checkout to accept credit and debit card purchases and on the Etsy app, although Etsy isn't saying exactly how many of the current sellers do qualify to receive this free reader. Now, as far as competition goes, Square charges the same 2.75% fee as Etsy, PayPal charges 2.7%, and Amazon is taking just 1.75% through the end of 2015, and then will raise the fee to 2.5% after that. So Amazon still wins, at least 
as the numbers stand now. Earlier today on TNT, we reported that Sapphire supplier GT Advanced Technologies had officially announced a settlement with Apple and that the two companies were dissolving their partnership, ending their production agreement, and eliminating contractual ties that kept GT from selling its Sapphire to other parties. Apple has since told Recode that GT's Sapphire manufacturing process just wasn't ready for production, but that a relationship in the future remains a possibility as the company's Sapphire production techniques improve. Apple also plans to look for other ways to use the Mesa, Arizona facility that it bought for GT Advance to make Sapphire, which will be no longer used after GT fully shuts down operations at the end of December. Coming up on Tech News Tonight, Aereo is dead, but is it really dead? Maybe it's just mostly dead. We'll tell you how the company might find success storming the broadcast castle. And up next, we'll talk with John Fingus from Engadget. He's going to talk a little bit more about why Windows 10 is pretty darn secure, at least more than it used to be. But first, let's thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. has beautiful designs, 25 beautiful templates, to just start creating something awesome. A lot of a lot of different templates too. It's not it's not just that they look good and the design is lovely, but there are different layouts depending on what kind of site you're looking to build. Is it a personal site? Is it for your company? Is it, you know, for a nonprofit idea? Do you have a video show? All that stuff is included. Also a logo creator tool. Maybe you've always wanted the perfect logo for yourself or your business. Do you know how to design a logo? Well, if you don't, Squarespace has a really easy to use way to put one together for you. If you have questions, Squarespace has live chat and email support every hour of the day, every day of the week. You'll always have somebody who's ready to help you if you run into questions. And there's an e-commerce platform as well, and that's available for all plan levels. No matter what kind of plan you have with Squarespace, you can accept donations. That's really good, again, if you're a nonprofit or you're trying to raise money for a wedding or, 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 or a school or, or really any way. E-commerce is built right into your Squarespace site. Plans start at just $8 a month. They include a free domain if you sign up for a year, and they also include hosting. It's an all-in-one solution, and it makes having a site that you put together and that stays up and you don't have to worry about really, really stress-free. Two apps that Squarespace has built. The metric app for iPhone and iPad allows you to check your site stats and who's following you and your unique visitors, where they're coming from. The blog app is where you can make changes on the go, make updates, add images, change your layouts, and monitor your comments. Like I said, hosting is included. Squarespace does everything so you don't have to. You can start a free two-week trial, free, 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 no credit card required, and start building your website right now. Take two weeks. See, see how Squarespace works. Do a little, do a little clicking and, and moving around behind the scenes. You'll really like it. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT because you can get a 10% off... And you can also let Squarespace know that you like our show, Tech News Tonight. Thanks to Squarespace for their support. Remember, 10% off and, and take advantage of that two-week free trial. No credit card necessary, just free and fun. And thanks to Squarespace for their support of TN2. All right, joining us now is John Fingus, Associate Editor over at Engadget. Hello, John. Hello. Nice to talk to you again. Nice to talk to you, too. And I'm very glad that you are safe and sound in Ottawa. Yeah, so so am I. It's been a frightening, uh, uh, frightening day or so for just like I mean everybody here. I mean, like we're get, we're getting through it, but yeah, it's been it's been a bit scary. Well, I am very happy to hear that you are safe and sound, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, it definitely has been an interesting forty eight hours for you, I'm sure. Let's talk about Windows 10. Windows 10 is, is you know, it's, it's, it's the big push by Microsoft to be the operating system uh, that Windows 8 was not. Um, and they're introducing some security measures uh, to make us all feel a little bit safer. Tell us about them. Okay. Well, basically, um, what they're doing is they're sort of baking two-factor authentication into the operating system. Well, that's the main thing. Um, like, I mean, normally, you're, if you've used two-factor authentication for security before, basically, it's like, say, you know, you somebody text met, like, they'll text message something to your phone. And once you've done that, like your phone number is like an authenticating factor and so on. Um, in this case, like the device itself is actually like your computer, for example, or your tablet is uh, is the authenticating factor or one of them. So uh, well, it's that and a like say a bio, like a pin code or a, or a biometric reader or something like that. So when you combine those two, um, it basically gets 
very hard to actually like say steal your identity. Like say so, say if somebody breaches your identity on a uh, compatible web service or something like that. Well, they can't do anything because unless they're actually sitting in front of your computer and even like the and like they have your pin code or your fingerprint, like they can't they can't like reset your password or uh, otherwise like try to compromise your data. So hopefully this will like say cut back on things like data breaches. Um, there's a couple of other things as well that are that are uh, like coming in. Like they're going to have a sort of a separation between personal and uh, work data. Like if you've ever seen like Android for Work or BlackBerry Balance, um, where they like where like you don't have to worry about like your you know your personal emails like getting in the way of your corporate stuff and so on. So uh, between that and like there's like some other like things like better VPN support. But basically, it amounts to a uh, much more secure system that should be like you know you don't have to worry so much about being compromised. Is this so. do you do you assume that this will just become an industry standard for operating systems uh, beyond Microsoft? I mean, two-factor auth is not obviously something that that is new to a lot of us, but on an OS level, uh, it seems like a no-brainer, but not widely used yet. Uh, I could actually see that happening simply because I mean. Well, especially like say you know, Apple, for example. I mean, they don't do this yet, but uh, like I mean, Apple's been uh, hammering the privacy point for for a long time. So I could easily see them say rolling it into like so like some future version of OS 10 or iOS, where like it says, okay, yep, like say your this Mac or this iPhone like is is vital for get it, for signing into your account, like your web account or something. So um, it could actually be. Uh, like before long, it'll be very difficult to actually to uh, just like simply grab somebody's like login info and run away with it. So I'm I'm looking forward to that actually. Especially uh, some uh, news from yesterday from uh, Twitter's flight conference. Uh, Twitter's trying to get away from uh, having people use email uh, uh, emails and passwords in order to log into Twitter and and instead uh, relying on things like phone numbers. It seems like password is going the way of the dodo slowly but surely across across the internet and uh, and tech devices. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it's like it's <laughs> easy, too. it's easy, but it's but uh, the whole problem with easy is that that makes it easy for exactly. other people to, to get access to it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to a day when you don't have to panic because like say your your store lot like somebody hacked their database and grabbed absolutely everything. So No kidding. Really good. Well, you know, while we while we continue with the the, the number ten theme uh, briefly, uh, you also wrote an article today uh, that Ubuntu has turned ten years old. Canonical's Ubuntu fourteen point one zero is is ten years old, which is well, I suppose besides the fact that it's a decade old, this is not a this is not a crazy update. Besides the fact that it has certainly uh, weathered a Linux storm over the years. Yeah, that's, which is kind of interesting because, uh, like, I mean. Well, I guess Ubuntu was has always kind of been pitched as sort of like the Linux for everybody, or at least for for more people. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, I mean, that's kind of a skeptical thing because, like, well, is Linux really for everybody? But in in some ways, it is because of of all the Linux distributions. It's like it's the one that like if anybody can name a Linux distribution, that's it. Um, like you know, Debian and Red Hat and uh, things like that. I mean, they, they're definitely. Uh, Surviving and they're still around. Like I mean, some of these distributions have been around forever, but um, but uh, Ubuntu is the one that like it just they just seem to be smart about designing it in a way that makes people want to use it or like make it makes it the first pick. So, John Figus is the associate editor over at Engadget, uh, based out of Ottawa, Canada. Again, so glad you're fine, and thanks for joining us on TN2. And before we let you go, let folks know where they can read all of your work. Okay, well, I mean, of course, you can always go to Engadget.com because I post prolifically over there. I mean, mm -hmm. if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at John Fingus. And, uh, like, I'm kind of inescapable on a lot of social networks. So, so like, uh, odds are if you, want to, if you look for my name, you'll probably, find, uh, probably be very easy to find me. Just make sure it's John without an H. Thanks so much, John. Yeah. You're very welcome. And we'll have you back on TNT real soon. Sounds great. All right. Finally, in some late-breaking news today that affects the future of cord cutting, dun-dun-dun, a federal judge in New York has ruled that live streaming TV service Aereo 
is in fact dead, but maybe just mostly dead. It could come back to life operating as a cloud DVR service. So here's the details. In a 17-page ruling, U.S. District Judge Allison Nathan denied Aereo a license to operate as a cable company, which would have permitted the company to resume its service and that service is capturing and retransmitting free over-the-air signals to mobile devices through a series of personal antennas. But as long as it paid broadcasters a fee, which pretty much negated the whole point of Aereo, but they can't even do that anyway. Now, Aereo had operated in about 12 cities before it had to shut down in July after the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the broadcasting company 6 to 3. The DVR question is still unclear, but the company can file for the judge to then issue a ruling on whether it could be a cloud DVR company. However, recently, other courts have ruled that other cloud-based DVRs, such as Dishes Hopper, are in fact legal, which has led to other companies, including Comcast just last month, to also launch similar services. So, Aereo, dead as we know it, but might come back to life as something else. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Please write us with feedback, questions, comments, or anything else at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program. I will be hosting it, Tech News Today, tomorrow, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And until then, I hope you have a great night. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.